Without electricity, life as we know it will end. And here is the bad news. There is widespread agreement among U.S. federal and state government officials, utility companies, and manufacturers of high-voltage transformers that the United States power grid is vulnerable to attacks that can send America back to the 80s of the 19th century. And who could destroy the power grid? If we're lucky, it's Russia or China. And if we're unlucky, it would be the sun. According to a 2008 report of the Commission to assess the threat to the United States from electromagnetic pulse attack, there are two scenarios, a bad one and a very bad one. The report concludes that within one year of a large-scale electromagnetic pulse attack or a direct hit by coronal mass ejection of the sun, at worst 9 out of 10, and at best 2 out of 3 Americans would be dead. But it's not just the EMPs and the CMEs that we should worry about. It's also sabotage. Spoiler alert, it has happened before. An internal memo from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission states, destroy nine interconnection substations and a transformer manufacturer and the entire United States grid would be down for at least 18 months, probably longer. According to the EMP task force, it's not a mere possibility, but a near certainty that the grid will be hit and it could happen any time. And if you think adversaries won't risk attacking the American power grid in the fears of mutual destruction, think again, because you are a victim of the great illusion. But how the sun can destroy the power grid within seconds, why it will be so difficult to rebuild it, and the likelihood of experiencing such a devastating event is not what you think. Electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, is a high-tech way of killing people the old-fashioned way. Starvation. When barbarians figured out that they could attack Rome by destroying their aqueducts, the population of Rome fell from 1 million to 30,000 people. Similarly today, bad actors could use nuclear EMP detonations, cyber attacks, or physical sabotage to cause incomprehensible damage to a society. It's a new way of warfare, the blackout warfare. Electricity is something that everyone takes for granted these days. You flip a switch and the lights come on. But a single high altitude nuclear explosion can send America back in time. 140 years ago, it wouldn't have been uncommon for people to have six months worth of food in their homes. Today, with just-in-time delivery, most households don't hold enough food to even last a week. In fact, modern cities only have three days worth of food supply on hand. If the grid goes down for a prolonged period of time, starvation would be imminent. But it's not just food. Without the grid, it's just a matter of time before nuclear plants explode. This is what happened to the three nuclear reactors that exploded at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant when it lost electricity as a result of a tsunami. Electricity is required to circulate water to cool down nuclear reactors. Otherwise, boom. Of course, they have backup generators, but with everything down, lights, pumps, supply chains, how long do you think the fuel would last? There are currently 92 nuclear reactors in the United States, most of which are located close to major population centers. You get my point. An electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, is an intense pulse of electromagnetic energy that could be generated by nuclear detonations high above the surface of the Earth. To cause a widespread EMP shockwave, the detonation can occur as low as 20 miles or as high as 300 miles above the Earth. Generally, the higher the detonation, the wider the effect. EMPs can also be caused by non-nuclear weapons, but their effects are usually more geographically limited. While it's unlikely that the EMP itself would directly destroy all electronics in the affected area, the real danger is the coupling of the EMP's electric and magnetic fields with the electrical grid or other electrical systems on the ground. This can produce damaging currents and voltage surges that could severely degrade equipment or even burn them out altogether. There are three primary types of EMP, E1, E2, and E3, 
Sometimes they're also called short, medium, and long EMP. We won't get too technical, but it's the long waves, the E3, that are the most damaging. These long waves will affect the transmission lines, producing surges which could travel thousands of miles, knocking out any transformers on their way. In the early 1950s, both Soviets and Americans started to do research on non-nuclear EMPs, but they remained classified until other countries started expressing interest in them. Currently, several nations have developed electromagnetic bombs, also known as E-bombs, which can fit into a briefcase and generate magnetic fields that would cripple most electronics in an area of several square miles. While most of the work on E-bombs remains classified, experts agree that they pose a real threat to critical infrastructure. You recall those Chinese spy balloons that flew over the US in the early 2023? The last one flew at 60,000 feet, which was high enough to cause a nuclear EMP if it had had the payload. While it's possible to use balloons for an EMP attack, it's not very practical given that balloons are slow and easy to shoot down. And why would you, when there are much more sophisticated ways to conduct an EMP attack? A missile can be launched from a freighter ship over the United States, or fractional orbital bombardment systems or FOBs can be used. FOBs relies on launching an object into low Earth orbit, which would allow the EMP payload to approach the United States from the south in a surprise attack, given that the southern US lacks early warning systems. The bottom line is that EMP attacks can be made anonymously to keep the fingerprints off and escape nuclear retaliation. But how damaging could the EMP be in real life? There's lots of conflicting information on EMPs in the public space, and of course tons of materials that are still classified. Some compare it to the Y2K scare, therefore calling EMP a nothing burger. Others claim EMPs to be an imminent catastrophe if no action is taken. According to the Electrical Power Research Institute, a high-altitude electromagnetic pulse, or hemp, would cause prolonged blackouts in multiple states but not the entire country. Nothing like the apocalypse portrayed in Hollywood movies. That said, the United States has an EMP task force, so it must be serious enough. Here is what we do know. Back on July 9, 1962, the United States detonated a 1.4 megaton nuclear bomb at an altitude of 250 miles over Johnston Atoll. This event is known as Starfish Prime. The resulting EMP from that explosion was much greater than expected, to the extent that Hawaii's electrical grid, which was more than 900 miles away, got damaged. But more importantly, at the time of the explosion, there were 21 satellites in orbit, of which 8 were damaged so badly that it compromised or terminated their missions. What happened to the other 13 satellites still remains classified. A significant EMP attack could be devastating to Starlink and weather satellites. And you can also say goodbye to your GPS. EMP experts like the former CIA director James Woolsey and ex-member of Congressional EMP Committee Peter Pry argue that an EMP attack not only can cause massive damage, it's also the easiest way to pull off such widespread attacks. According to Pry and Woolsey, if a strong enough nuclear device was detonated 200 miles above the United States, the resulting electromagnetic pulse would destroy most electronics, computers and cars. And worse, it can severely damage or destroy high-voltage transformers. Knocking down these transformers is like stopping the heart of the power grid. The United States power grid has been called the largest machine in the world given that it has 11,925 utility-scale electric power plants, about 3,000 utility companies, and over 2 million miles of power lines. In reality, the grid is broken into pieces. The three self-contained interconnections of power production and transmission are the Western Interconnect, the Eastern Interconnect, and Texas Interconnect. A big part of the grid is made up of transmission lines that transport electricity over long distances between power plants and cities. To make this transportation more efficient, electricity must be transferred in high voltages, which is done with the help of step-up transformers. 
Before electricity can be distributed to the customers, the voltage is reduced with step-down transformers. These high-voltage step-up and step-down transformers represent less than 3% of the total transformers in the United States. And yet, they carry between 60% to 90% of the nation's electricity. At the moment, the US approximately has 2100 very large high-voltage transformers rated at 345 kilovolts and above, which service over 200,000 miles of transmission lines. It is exactly these very large high-voltage transformers that are the Achilles heel of the entire grid. With only a handful of transformers like this available as spare, if the grid were to lose too many of them at once, it could result in a catastrophic scenario. The high-end 500 kV transformers cost anywhere between 10 to 20 million dollars and are all custom-made. The global production of these transformers is about 200 units per year. While the United States has five facilities that can manufacture very large transformers, the reality is that 82% of them are built overseas. The only countries in the world that produce them for export are Germany and South Korea. Given that the current average age of a high-voltage transformer in the United States is about 40 years, just replacing the aging fleet of transformers would be a challenge of its own. Prior to the pandemic, it took about one year to order and receive one large transformer. Post-pandemic, it takes three years. Beside the price tag and the long lead time to receive these transformers, they are also a pain to transport. Weighing as much as 435 tons, they could include as much as 29,000 gallons of cooling oil. These transformers can only be transferred on specially designed rail cars with 36 axles that can distribute their massive load. There are less than 20 such rail cars in the United States. Alternatively, there are also a handful of specialized trucks that can carry these behemoths. Destroying just nine of these transformers and disabling one of their American manufacturers would be deemed catastrophic. Imagine what would happen if a hundred or a thousand of these transformers were damaged by an EMP. Both the Russians and Chinese have the capability to produce EMP attacks on the American grid with both nuclear and non-nuclear weapons. Cyber attacks can also be used in conjunction with non-nuclear EMP weapons, which have a lesser geographical reach. Both nations have military doctrines that outline the use of EMP weapons. Combined arms cyber warfare is described in Russian, Chinese, North Korean, and Iranian military doctrines. They call for cyber attacks, sabotage, and nuclear EMP attacks over the United States to black out the country. But even if you believe that it's unlikely for America's adversaries to successfully attack its power grid, there is one more thing that can cripple the grid. Just look up. A coronal mass ejection, or CME, is a large ejection of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona, the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere. It can eject billions of tons of coronal material that travel at hundreds of kilometers per second. The CME contains radiation and powerful magnetic fields which can have similar effects as a man-made EMP, and they happen more frequently than you might think. On September 1st, 1859, a massive coronal mass ejection occurred, which released the equivalent energy to 10 billion atomic bombs. This event was spotted by amateur astronomer Richard Carrington, who noticed in his telescope two patches of intensely bright and white light. Five minutes later, the fireballs had disappeared, but in mere hours, the effects of those fireballs hit the Earth. Not only was the sky covered in auroras all over the planet, the telegraph communications started to fail everywhere, with sparks flying out of equipment, causing many fires. This event became known as the Carrington Event, which is the largest known magnetic storm to ever hit the Earth. In May 1921, there was a similar event that disrupted telegraph and telephone lines around the world. More recently, in March 1989, as a result of CME, a massive electrical power blackout occurred in Quebec, Canada due to a nine-hour outage of Hydro-Quebec's electricity transmission system. 
The last major CME occurred in 2012, but luckily it missed the Earth by 9 days. The coronal mass ejections are just like playing dodgeball. It's just a matter of time before you get hit. Solar flares as strong as the Carrington event are estimated to hit our planet every 100 to 150 years. And this is why NASA says that each decade has a 12% chance of being hit by a massive solar flare. But it's not just the EMPs and CMEs that we should worry about. It's also sabotage. Few people may know this, but on April 16, 2013, a group of gunmen opened fire on Metcalf Transmission Substation in California, severely damaging 17 transformers. According to some U.S. Navy SEALs, the Metcalf incident was not an amateur job, simply based on the way the attack had been carried out. In fact, both the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and the U.S. Navy SEALs concluded that this was likely an exercising dry run for a larger attack on the American power grid. Similar attacks on substations had occurred as recently as December 2022 in North Carolina, Washington State, and Oregon. On a more positive side of this story, some analysts point out that the electrical service was not interrupted in the San Francisco Bay Area due to the Metcalf incident. Further evidence for the resilience of electrical grids is the Russian attempt to black out Ukraine when they targeted transformers throughout the country. While nearly 50% of the Ukrainian critical energy infrastructure was damaged by Russian missile attacks, and despite recurring blackouts, the Ukrainian power grid ultimately survived. But how likely exactly is it for an EMP attack to happen? Most people view the detonation of a nuclear weapon at high altitude over the United States as an incredibly unlikely scenario, and understandably so. Not only would such an attack result in a retaliatory nuclear strike, it would also be bad for business. Why would China or Russia want to collapse the American economy when it would hurt their own as well? The thing is, the argument about wars being bad for business has been made before. In 1910, Norman Angel published a book called The Great Illusion, with the primary thesis that the economic costs of war was so great that no one could possibly hope to gain by starting a war, the consequences of which would be so disastrous. Even though The Great Illusion may have been correct about great wars being futile, four years later, World War I began. The issue with totalitarian regimes is that their leaders have the goal of staying in power and not necessarily helping their citizens prosper. Their highest priority is total control over the world and whoever is not their slave is their mortal enemy and thus war is inevitable. Therefore, blackout tactics such as cyber warfare, EMP and sabotage are relatively easy low-risk warfare tactics compared to all-out nuclear war. Some analysts, like Dr. Peter Pry, believed that the why question is the wrong one to ask. The right question is when. In his view, both Moscow and Beijing are willing to do whatever it takes to win. Now before you rush to the grocery store to stock up on canned food and toilet paper in preparation for the apocalypse, we should mention that the devastating effects of EMPs can be mitigated by hardening the grid. According to the EMP task force, there are relatively inexpensive solutions to shield the high-voltage transformers. The bad news is that according to the task force, the plans to harden electrical infrastructure against EMPs or CMEs are virtually non-existent. A 2019 Electric Power Research Institute report suggests that a large-scale nuclear EMP event will cause regional blackouts, meaning that several states will be affected. They furthermore suggest that the restoration process would be minimal as long as the grid has been hardened, which currently is not. They don't anticipate widespread damage to the transformers. But keep in mind that the Electric Power Research Institute could potentially be biased to downplay the risks. They are, after all, funded by the energy sector, which doesn't want to spend money on hardening the grid. On March 26, 2019, President Donald Trump signed an executive order to harden the grid against EMP shockwaves. 
Another executive order was issued on May 1, 2020 to direct the Energy Department to prepare for the ban of future procurement of foreign-made grid controls and components that could be infected by concealed malware. However, utility companies are reluctant to upgrade the grid or purchase only US-made equipment due to high costs and their perception that an EMP threat is unlikely. You may run to the grocery store now.